what kind of questions should you be asking somebody like at a trade show yeah. or in general that says they represent a factory? What kind of questions should you be asking them to see if they're legitimate? So first thing I always go in is like, you know, you give them the look like, you know, like look at skepticism. Diego's seen me do this a lot of times. It's like, do you actually make this? And then, then like, once you get into that, then sometimes you'll be like, oh, okay, no, no, no. But I always ask like, you know, how many fabric inspection stations do you have? How many flat lock machines do you have? How many sergers? How many different types of machinery? Because based off of that, for our clients, I can uh, kind of extrapolate what's the production capacity. I always ask how many people are there in a sample room. If they, some factories don't have sample rooms, then I'm like, okay, if you don't have a sample room, you're not putting out a lot of samples. Therefore, I'm probably not gonna get good samples from you. And you're probably not dealing with a lot of clients. So sample room size is big, you know, some people, they have 200 people in their sample room. It's like, okay, well, what does that mean? That means they're either using sample room to do small production runs. So they're set up to do small yes. productions and they pump out a lot of samples. You know, how many pattern masters do they have? How much experience does a pattern master have? What does a pattern master have experience in? You know, if I take a guy who's been making t-shirts for 25 years, he probably would make me a really fucking good t-shirt. Yeah. But if I ask him to make me a dress, you know, Oh, he might be a pattern master, but if he hasn't made a dress in 20, 30 years, like he's not gonna be able to execute on it. It's a different story. Completely different story. And you know, you have to be concerned with like how the fabric's gonna drape, how it's gonna fit on you. So being able to ask those things, you know, what regions are they in? Uh, you know, what kind of payment terms they'll they'll do, and then say like, are, can can I visit you? And, you know, if they say you can visit you, it's like, is this your factory that I'm gonna be visiting, or are you gonna take me somewhere else? <laughs> because uh, you know, I also said this to you too, like when I first started manufacturing, like almost a decade ago, some factories I visited, I was like bright eye and bushy tail. I'm like, oh, it's so big. <laughs> and now I go back and I'm like, oh, it's not as big as I remember. Yeah, yeah. There's some big factories out there. Oh, yeah. There. There's like, we, you know, we're sampling some factories in Bangladesh and they're like small cities. Legitimately, the size of small cities because they have so many workers to, to produce these things. I think this is actually a great topic to talk about too is the quality of product and manufacturing because I think a lot of people believe you go to China and you're getting poor quality product. Oh yeah, the stigmas. And it's just not true. I this it's such a huge problem, honestly. Like I think I think that this whole conception that consumers have created now where they look inside, they look at the care label and they see made in China and all of a sudden they're like, I don't want to buy it. It's so backwards because there's good China and there's bad China. That's really yeah. what it comes down to, right? Like China puts out, I think it's like 28% of the world's product comes out of China. It's insane, right? It's, yeah. it's a lot of product, okay? But there's great factories that make unbelievable product. There are some things I would rather make in China than make in Italy. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Because there's just, they have the machinery, they have the expertise that you just can't get in these other countries, right? Mm -hmm. like if I'm doing anything tape seaming, like those complex GORP jackets, mm -hmm. like there's some factories in China that are unbelievable. The laser cutting machines and everything, you can't come close. So I find people should not be so quick to judge made in China. Mm -hmm. And there's some factories in China that are very expensive to produce that as well, right? It, it, it's it's all about managing your expectations for what product you want. If you want to create a solid product, if you go to a factory and ask them how low can I make it for, they'll use the and you know that's their that's the bar that you set for them. They will find the cheapest yarn. They'll find the cheapest fabric. They'll find the cheapest things because that is that's the mission you gave them. That's you're 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 leading with the wrong question when you go in and you lead with price. Yeah. And in general, when you're speaking to a factory, I found what's been the most effective is if you actually want to make 5,000 units of something, you tell them you want to make 2,000. Mm -hmm. And then you negotiate on quantity. Mm -hmm. That's how you get your price back. So if they quote you out at $10 for 2,000, but you want to pay $8, you say, I want to make 5,000 mm -hmm. and we do $8. And so you started off with a lower quantity. All of a sudden you have leverage when you say you want to produce more. Say you're a designer, you've created this design. What do you want this design to be? Do you want it to be designed and, and fit your consumers as intended? Yes. Or do you want this design to be completely butchered because you've just tried to get the price as low as possible? Absolutely. You know, I've worked with factories where if you're looking to create something really high quality, you just say high quality and just expect it's going to cost more because the yarn costs more, the fabric costs more, the labor costs more. It just costs more to produce this garment and be okay with that. And that's how you get a really awesome product at the end of the day. Absolutely. 
you know, I think it's, you don't want to get ripped off a hundred percent. And, you know, I've just been manufacturing clothing for so long. I kind of know what things should price, like what things should cost to make, but trying to not squeeze your manufacturing partners is such an important thing. And it's, you know, you know, I think people lose sight of the fact that the factories are people too. Like people yeah. literally lose sight of the fact that they're not just robots that answer your simple questions of how much things cost. Like these are humans with families and lives. You can bring them gifts. They'll give you samples for free when you take good care of them. You know, if it's Chinese new year, wish them a happy new year, be considerate, think about them. Like there's a whole side to that where I think people completely miss that mark. If you guys want to see more of these type of videos and more on what goes on behind the scenes in fashion, don't forget to subscribe and check out these videos.